High above the busy streets and rolling hills of Tijuana, Baja California, rises a tall, shining metallic arch, welcoming visitors from across the world to this great northwestern Mexican city. For local residents, meanwhile, this arch represents a new chapter in Tijuana's history, a border city long known for its nightlife culture. The Tijuana Arch, officially known as the Reloj Monumental de Tijuana, or Tijuana Monumental Clock, was meant to show Tijuana as a modern global city on the Pacific Rim, connecting both Mexico and the United States, as well as the growing economies of East Asia. Although controversial since its construction, the Tijuana Arch has also become one of the city's most important symbols in redefining itself in the 21st century. Join us in this nomadic border journey as we explore the Tijuana Arch and Clock, a new symbol for the U.S.-Mexican border. The city of Tijuana is located in the westernmost corner of the U.S.-Mexican border in the northwestern Baja California Peninsula. Due to its location, Tijuana's motto is Aquí empieza la patria. The nation starts here. In 2020, Tijuana's population reached 1,810,000 inhabitants, making it Mexico's second largest city and one of the fastest growing cities along the border, with a 40% increase in population from the previous census in 2010. The Tijuana Arch and Clock is clearly visible along the San Isidro Port of Entry into San Diego, California. In 2018, this port of entry registered nearly 70 million border crossings, making it not only the most transited port of entry between Mexico and the United States, but also the entire Western Hemisphere. Located just 2,000 feet south of the international border, the Tijuana Arch and Clock measures 110 feet wide and 196 feet in height, or about as tall as a 14-story building, making the metallic arch easily visible throughout Tijuana and just across the border in southwestern San Diego County. The towering arch was built on Avenida Revolución, Tijuana's most famous street, to specifically welcome foreign tourists. Tijuana's Avenida Revolución has historically been the cultural heart of the city and the prime destination for tourists visiting from San Diego, Los Angeles, and other Californian cities.
Nevertheless, by the 1990s, Tijuana's urban image needed revitalization due to the rise in violent killings in this border community. As drug trafficking here grew, so also did the number of homicides. The murder of 357 individuals in 1998 was very typical of late 1990s Tijuana homicide rates. By comparison, neighboring San Diego, California only counted 42 murders that same year. It is important to note that in 1994, Tijuana was also the scene of the tragic assassination of Luis Donaldo Colosio, the frontrunner in that year's Mexican presidential elections. Indeed, as the new millennium approached, Tijuana desperately needed to reinvent its image. The Tijuana Arch and Monumental Clock was first proposed in 1998 by Francisco Kiko Vega de la Madrid, the municipal president or mayor of Tijuana. As one of his earliest projects as mayor, Kiko Vega envisioned the arch as welcoming the new millennium by revitalizing Avenida Revolución and the city's historic Plaza Santa Cecilia. The Plaza Santa Cecilia has historically been a gathering place for mariachis and other Tijuanan musicians. Tijuana Mayor Kiko Vega gave this explanation for his support for the Monumental Arch and Clock project. As the project rises, it will become an architectural symbol for the city and serve as a starting point for an initiative which will reactivate Avenida Revolución, revitalize the Zona Norte district, and strengthen the tourist corridor. Francisco Kiko Vega de la Madrid, Tijuana Municipal President. The Cabildo, or City Council, formed a committee of local citizens to determine the project design through a contest. The winning design was the Reloj Monumental Tijuana 2000, or Tijuana Monumental Clock Proposal by architects Leo de Gario Silva Lopez, Edgar Ivan Rodriguez Llerenas, and Moises Lopez Smith. Their proposal featured a steel arch structure of copper construction. The project was budgeted at 6,400,000 pesos, or 640,000 US dollars at the time, a modest figure in comparison to the sums U.S. cities often pay for various urban renewal projects, but a high investment for a city like Tijuana, where many neighborhoods lack access to electricity and sewage services. I believe there are lots of things lacking in the city, and this won't solve downtown's problems, which include dealing with the children in the streets, trash, and the influx of street vendors. Yolanda Enriquez, Tijuana City Councilwoman. Many businesses around Avenida Revolución and La Plaza Santa Cecilia opposed the project, fearing it would damage the historic center's architectural integrity, as well as the disruption it would cause to their establishments. Despite the opposition, the Tijuana Arch was built with its two bases on the northwestern and southeastern corners of Avenida Revolución at its intersection with Calle Primera or Calle Arguello. Located at the base of the Tijuana Arch, the Plaza Santa Cecilia derives its name from Cecilia of Rome, an early saint of the Catholic Church commemorated as the patroness of music. As mentioned previously, the Plaza Santa Cecilia hosts many restaurants and stores, and is a celebrated meeting place for mariachi musicians in particular. As time went on, Mayor Kiko Vega's monumental clock and arch project generated other controversies. When the private financing for the expensive urban renewal project dried up, Vega pushed the Cabildo to fund construction until private groups could later repay the city. Although proposed as a tribute to Tijuana's place in a new millennium, groundbreaking did not actually occur until December 31, 1999. Principal work itself did not begin until April 2000, by which point a municipal investigation discovered improprieties in how the project's building contract was managed. Construction of the arch did not finish until October 2001, thus, from a certain point of view, making this project take place over two calendar millennia.
Nevertheless, Giko Vega kept the Scandal Plague project alive, completing it only on the last day of his term. The Tijuana Monumental Clock and Arch was officially dedicated on November 30, 2001. Although the project's delays and decreasing tourism after the September 11, 2001 terror attacks greatly detracted from the historic moment's festive mood. As mayor of the state's largest city, Vega pushed for the project to be completed to help his prospects as a gubernatorial candidate for the 2001 Baja California elections. Unsuccessful in the 2001 and 2007 elections, Kiko was finally elected governor for a six-year term in 2013. The Tijuana Arch's early years were a time of great frustration. While southbound motorists could see a Welcome to Tijuana sign suspended between the monument's legs, the opposite side of the sign included a digital clock comprised of very small TV monitors. However, it stopped working just a few weeks after its dedication. The broken clock, whose interior parts had been stolen, became an eyesore for local merchants. The new landmarks, mixed to negative reception, suggested it might not be part of the Tijuana landscape for too long. In 2011, the local Via Tijuana TV program described the clock as, quote, looking completely forgotten, unquote. In 2014, local merchants finally convinced Mayor Jorge Astiazaran Orsi to improve the arches upkeep as part of an effort to bring tourists back to the border city. The long broken digital clock was replaced with a larger outdoor television donated by Samsung as part of the Korean corporation's five-year plan to invest 100 million US dollars in Tijuana. Sporting events and corporate advertisements have run on the large monitor since it was first installed in February 2015. It was just as the monumental clock and arch were revitalized that Tijuana entered into a new phase in its history. Recalling this border city's explosive demographic growth in recent years, Tijuana became Mexico's second largest city in 2020. This development is significant in affirming the importance of Mexico's northern border region in the country's overall cultural identity. Nevertheless, it is important to note that in the 2020s, many long-running problems continue affecting Tijuana. In comparison to the 1990s, when the Tijuana murder rate usually hit 300 killings per year, 2,124 murders were recorded in Tijuana just in 2021, making it Mexico's most violent city. Despite these profoundly significant challenges, Tijuana's daily and cultural life keeps moving on. By the looks of it, the urban renewal that Tijuana Monumental Arch and Clock helped initiate has propelled this border city into a culinary, brewing, and artistic capital. Today, this monumental arch is a new symbol of Tijuana's Avenida Revolución, 
one of the great cultural landscapes in this corner of the U.S.-Mexican border region. Although many Tijuanenses continue to complain the arch is just an extravagant billboard, its renovation improved its status as a cultural landmark for this border city. Indeed, many tourist guides highlight the arch as a key part of visiting the city. The arch is now a common reference point Tijuanenses use when giving directions. Are you lost? Just look for the arch. Although its controversial origins can in many ways be traced to Mayor Kiko Vega's long-term political ambitions, there can be no doubt that 20 years after its debut, that the Tijuana Monumental Clock and Arch has become an essential part of historic Avenida Revolución. The arch is a defining symbol of 21st century Tijuana, the most transited border crossing in the Americas and one of Mexico's fastest growing cities. This was the story of how the Tijuana Monumental Arch and Clock became a new and enduring symbol for the U.S.-Mexican border. <laughs>